Hello, and welcome to the watering hole. Thanks for checking out this clip. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that'll make the baby Jesus cry. And I know how much you guys love making the baby Jesus cry. Uh, so this is, we're back to Hemant Meta. Um, Shout out. Uh, Army chaplain's PhD thesis, using the military to win Christian converts. And the, yes, this is exactly what it sounds like. It's actually worse than it sounds like from the headline. He's literally advocating for using the military to spread Christianity throughout the world, not just to military service members, but to the people in the countries that the military is sent to. Yeah, while they're like, while they're bombing just, them? Like while yeah. they're raping Look, people there? Like while just, they're... Just, just imagine how this would play out if you replaced Christianity with Islam in this. Because there, there are Muslim troops. Would they be allowed to do a PhD th thesis on using the army to spread Islam? It's just, no, it's such a nightmare. It's such a nightmare, especially because we've become so accustomed to this type of thing that we're like, yeah, that's, that's not great. And then we just kind of all move past it instead of realizing like how incredibly dangerous and scary it is that there are people out there that think this and that are trying to implement it um and we don't recognize it as a threat i don't even know if threat is the right word but like we don't recognize the fact that this is inherently inherently flies in the face of what a secular pluralistic society is supposed to be he well he actually says later in the article that uh, he's taking advantage of the fact that the military is pluralistic to get away with some of his stuff like and it, it one of the things that really stuck out to me was that um it, well, well we'll get to it I'll, I'll get to it later don't don't let me forget this um but yeah so he so first off he's uh he's of the southern baptist convention and he's a chaplain so given the report that just came out that means that statistically he's either a sexual predator or he knows a sexual predator statistically or speaking or yeah or he's actively predator. protecting them um but yeah anyway he uh, he did his phd dissertation in uh what is it missiology which missiology. is the mm -hmm. study of religious missions usually christian ones and uh, apparently he did his whole dissertation in seven months which is outrageously fast for a PhD dissertation. Where did he go? Like Grace Bible Theological Seminary that had to get a letter of exemption from like the Department of Education. Like, how do you do that in seven months? Uh, da, 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 da. let's see. Does it say what school it was? It's just nobody does um, that. That's... Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you, you're same idea. Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Yeah, checks out. Yeah, the fact that anybody can do this and then call themselves a doctor is just like a. Bleh. Yeah, I I have on more than one occasion considered getting a doctorate from a diploma mill, but I always yeah. end up not because I don't want to support them with my money. Right, of course, yeah, but it's yeah, God, it just it drives me insane. These people, like the people that do this and then lord the term doctor over everyone, it's just like a circle jerk of mediocrity like it's just so embarrassing for them personally um but the problem is, is that people don't actually know how a lot of these places are accredited or if they're accredited or like what it means to be accredited by a certain organization and not another yeah. um and so it lends this idea of authority to folks who are like the most non-impressive people all the time. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, oh. so he argues in his dissertation that uh, Southern Baptists should work on planting biblically grounded churches near military installations so that they can later send these trained disciples on mission equipped to carry the gospel with them wherever they move or deploy to the ends of the earth. So he's literally advocating for using the army to spread Christianity, specifically Southern Baptist Christianity. I sincerely mean this. Southern Baptists have no fucking idea what it means to be biblically sound. I would agree with I, that. They just don't. 
um, their idea of biblically sound is cherry picked um, and also rooted in white supremacy. Hi, Jesus Christ. The Southern Baptist Convention happened because of slavery. These people promote, at least some of them, and it historically, the idea that Jesus was a white man with blue eyes. Like, what are oh, y'all smoking? Even, even in my some. super progressive gay loving church, we had the white Jesus picture hanging up everywhere. <laughs> but like, they actually think, some of them actually think Jesus was a white man. Like, if you if you talk to a lot of Christians, yeah, you'll see those kinds of pictures. They've been whitewashed. But if you kind of get into it, they'll be like, yeah, he was, you know, from the Middle East. He probably had but more like ruddy skin tone, right? But like, yeah. there are certain sects of the SBC that still think that Jesus was actually white that doesn't really surprise me all that much no it's not surprising it's just like well why what, is anyone listening to them what really drives me nuts here so um a military chaplain is supposed to be able to not just perform their duties in their own religion they're supposed yeah. to be able to do it for other people like I, I always think like Father Mulcahy in MASH is like the perfect example of that because he like he's a Catholic priest, but he had right. no problem setting that aside and performing a Buddhist wedding or um, right. he, he got uh, he got a rabbi on the radio and was performing a bris, which mm -hmm. I have different feelings about that episode now than when I was a Christian. He was like, no, leave that baby's foreskin alone. But right, yes. st the, the idea like still the idea is he's putting his religion aside in order to fulfill his duty as an army chaplain for yes. this service member who is not the same religion as him. Um, and that's, that's what an army chaplain is supposed to be able to do. Um, and like this, this guy does not do like, uh, I'm going to skip. No, of course he's not. Skip down. I a mean, so bit. I know a certain someone who I will not name at this moment, who was a prison chaplain for some time. And he was a Christian, evangelical. Uh, Y'all might know who I'm talking about. But anyway, and and he, like the guy who led the sort of program at the prison, the sort of religious whatever, I don't know what to call it, who oversaw the chaplaincy, um, was a Christian. And so even though he was obligated to provide sort of like the you know the fundamentals for each person's religion like yeah. if you are a part of if you're a muslim then they needed to provide you with like a mat right to pray on and they would pick the like least comfortable cheapest just like worst sort of fabric whatever you want to call it for those mats because they just thought that religion was the wrong basically one. satanic yeah. right and wrong and yada 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 and so it's like yeah there's a lot of that going on i know obviously the military and prison are different but like yeah. it, it's the same idea right if you're going to become a chaplain where you're supposed to be able to minister or whatever assist any religion you actually need to have some respect for those other religions even if you don't believe in them and christians absolutely sorry, I know not all Christians, hashtag, do not respect other religions. And I honestly think you would be hard pressed unless you found some really progressive Christians, which exist, that genuinely respect other religions um, and don't actually think like, yes, I respect that religion, but they're still going to hell. Like, that's a very specific Thing. Yes, the, yes, there are progressive Christians that can do that and say that, I know. But largely, even among Christians that say they respect other religions, they still think they're fundamentally wrong and in need of saving. Yeah, so uh, back to Father Mulcahy, Eric Mishma Sorry. says, Jocularity! Jocularity! <laughs> Love that episode. Fun fact, those, those episodes were either aired out of order or filmed out of order because they make jokes about Father Mulcahy's jocularity thing when they're all doing impressions of him before the jocularity incident that they were all making fun of happened. If you watch the episodes in the order that they are on the That's DVDs, funny. which I forget what that, um, I, I think that might've been the time he got drunk on the communion wine and then gave a sermon on temperance. So, okay. I'm I love really Mash. Sorry. 
I have never seen MASH. It's it's good, but it was you got to keep in mind that it was filmed in the 1970s, so there are some things where it's like, oh, that's kind of rapey. Don't do that. I mean, I can't. So I grew up in the 90s and or in the 2000s, um, and like one of my favorite shows was Home Improvement. And I thought I was going to be like nostalgic and like watch some episodes. And I was horrified yeah. when I saw how like homophobic and awful it was. I was like, nope, nope, yeah. can't do this. Well, that's that's the thing about MASH, though, is that like it really was progressive. It's just like, make Hawkeye less rapey, please. 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 Like, please. he doesn't need to be rapey. Like, everything else was great about it. it was just, and, and I think in the later seasons, he got better with it. It's like the... The first seasons they were trying to they're kind of trying to be um like the movie which of course has the famous scene where they like they have to check and see if margaret's you know if the bushes match the drapes or uh, no the oh, curtains God. match the drapes or whatever so they pull down yeah. the showers while she's at and that that was the movie and i i i actually haven't been able to finish the movie because i don't find it funny at all it's just boring yeah, yeah, yeah. And, i mean it's a interesting discussion which i know again off topic but like when we think about how much can we excuse based on when it was made, right? Versus like, it's just, it's interesting because there are certain things that I look back on and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I could probably still watch that even though they had some problems. And there's other stuff that I watch and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. gonna have to let that one go. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have most of the DVDs from Ash, so I... I mean, it sounds overall like it's probably mostly fine <laughs> it is i think maybe if i watched it again i would have a different opinion it's been a while since i've seen it last but yeah anyway um so harrison that's the guy that got his phd he sees the pluralistic yeah. this is what we were talking about earlier he sees the pluralistic nature of the military as an opportunity saying this situation also offers access to people in need of the gospel to him non-christian soldiers are nothing more than moving right. targets for jesus and then this is what really rankles me is that um, he was asked to con like as a chaplain, he was asked to conduct a funeral for a Christian soldier who died in combat. Now, the soldier was Christian, but he was told that the funeral needs to be secular. And uh, he said he responded by saying he couldn't in good conscience intentionally remove Christ from a memorial service for another Christian. And then his commander relented and said, well, if there's any consequences, you're going to deal with them, not me. So you just pass the buck. And that would have pissed me right the fuck off. Like, because oh, I, I actually yeah, remember I when, shit up. so when, when my wife died, I had to explain what the word secular meant to our funeral director. She'd never oh, heard it God. before. Um, now, thankfully, the, the person we ended up doing, uh, getting to do the service, she did a phenomenal job. It was amazing. Um, but it, it's, it's still so it was annoying. it was it was an awkward conversation to have as it was but then right. if the response had been no the person just gets up and preaches the gospel at us anyway i would have been so fucking pissed yeah i mean I, first of all when someone dies there should have to be no arguments i'm going to tell you what they wanted or what i want or whatever and then that's how it's going to go down um, because you didn't know that person. And unless they specifically said in their will, this, uh, you know, service must be X, Y, or Z. I don't know why I'm arguing with some stranger about how we're going to do a funeral service for someone that I knew and loved. Yeah, in fact, we're not going to argue about that. <laughs> and if we do, you're not going to like it. Um, because I just lost someone very near and dear to me. And now you're making me justify the way that I want their memorial service done. Mm -hmm. No, you can fucking eat shit. Um, but like the fact that then somebody would get up and based on their own personal stance without knowing the person that's passed out of complete disrespect for his family, because mm -hmm. he thinks he knows what's best for other people. No. Yeah, I would no. have stood up in the middle of that service, taken his mic, and done it myself. Like, <laughs> <clears throat> absolutely fucking not. Yeah, and, yeah, and I, we I we that. even we we even got a couple comments afterwards from people that were at the funeral and were like, "That was such a beautiful service for one that didn't mention God." 
And it's like, these are people that we kind of know, but kind of didn't know. Yeah. So it's All like, right. Well, okay, tell me then. That's, um, that's nice. Whatever. <laughs> why did God allow this to happen? Hmm? Yeah, I wasn't about to do that there. No, of course you weren't. I and mean, that's not like what you need to do. But like, generally speaking, the same people that want God included in everything have absolutely no answer when it comes to like, if God's in everything, why is all of this shit going to hell? Hmm? Like, where is he in all of this? You just want him in the funeral services? Like, come on, dog. Yeah. Like, sorry. All right. Nope. That's it's all good. Um, that's pretty much it. Hammond just goes into the thing about like if a Muslim chaplain were to do the same thing, right? That would be that would be like national news. It's a terrible, terrible double standard. Uh, wildly hypocritical. Jocularity. Jocularity. <laughs> <laughs>